Well, I have got a special treat for you today. I got a box from Amazon, and everything inside of this box has been paid for with a check from YouTube. You have paid for this stuff. It's a Handtech 1008C, a 8-channel oscilloscope. Now, this was pretty cheap. This was only like $80 for the the oscilloscope itself. Now I know what you're thinking, why didn't I just get a PicoScope or something from AES Wave like the U-Scope? Well, those things are like three, four, five times more expensive than this. And yes, they are also three, four, five times better than this. So this is a very cheap entry-level USB DSO digital storage oscilloscope. Now one of the reasons why this kind of kit is really expensive is if you're like me and you don't have you know your oscilloscope probes, your high amp probe, your low amp probe, 20 to 1 attenuator, back probes, you don't have any of the accessories for your for an oscilloscope. This is my Mastec MS8268 digital multimeter. This is the extent of my electronic diagnostic capabilities. It's just a multimeter. That's all I've had. So now, kind of stepping up, getting a digital oscilloscope, and because my vehicle is OBD1, I don't have an OBD2 scan tool, so I can't do the auto ingenuity or any of the other PC-based scan tools. And this is a PC-based uh, oscilloscope, and all of this was purchased on Amazon, and I do have more stuff coming, but I don't have it for this video, such as the low amp clamp, high amp clamp, and some other little accessories. One of the things that really sold me on getting this, a bunch of videos done by a YouTuber of the name Enrique Osario. There are hand tech 1008 videos online most of them are either Chinese or Russian or Spanish Enrique Osario is a BMW tech he's the only one that has videos for the capabilities that this thing does and this thing is advertised as a, an automotive DSO so it's specially built for automotive applications and you do need to get the 20 to 1 attenuator and some of the other stuff that older Pico scope owners will be familiar with now they've done away with the attenuator and it's all built in you don't need the attenuator anymore most of the older models you do and for this you need the attenuator why in the world do I need an eight channel oscilloscope well it's just the fact that it was cheap it didn't it wouldn't matter if it was only two channels or four channels or whatever it's just the price was right the capabilities were right BNC connectors to alligator clips BNC to alligator uh, I'm guessing BNC to alligator, BNC to alligator, four, four of those leads. So this is a secondary waveform ignition probe. And even though it's clamps, it's still it's still a probe. So a BNC connector, USB data and power. I am assuming data and power. Crap, I hope I don't have to make my own cables. I have no idea what those are for. Okay. And you can see right under here, there's a CD. So that's going to be the driver software. Thank you to Enrique Osario, who shows you how to install this and get English. If I were to install this as is, my program on my laptop would show up in Chinese. Yes, Chinese. Basically, take this disc. You can just leave it in the box. Go to the uh, Handtech website. Follow Enrique Osario's tutorial on how to set up your software so that it is in English. It's a great step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get this in English, and I will be following that when that time comes. So we'll unpack this, and this is the comes with some tasty silica gel. And this is the hand tech unit. I'm guessing these are the signal generators. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what that's going to be. So we have one kilohertz, two VP dash P. I have no idea what that means. I know it's a signal generator of some kind. One has a little square bracket and the other's rounded. I have no idea why. I don't see a plug for that. Maybe alligator clips. That's probably what it is. So the alligator clips will clip on there, but it's weird having one square and one round. As you can see, we have channels one through six here, channel seven and eight back here. Uh, because they're separated like that, perhaps channel seven and eight might have different functionality. Little diagram of the pinouts. USB cable. So thank you to 
all of my subscribers on YouTube uh, for making something like this a possibility. I would have never purchased all of this stuff with my own money. Uh, way too expensive. It was about $300 for all of this stuff. 80 for this, 80 for the high amp clamp, 80 for the low amp clamp, maybe five bucks for the back probes. Another 10, I think, for the attenuator, along with shipping and some other stuff that is not here. Basically on advertiser revenue. I'd like to thank my advertisers, whomever you are. I know Mazda does a lot of advertising on my channel, as well as Toyota. I don't know if there's ever a Honda advertisement on my channel, but if there are, uh, let me know so that I can remove the Honda. I'm just kidding. That, that probably doesn't even make a difference. So I'm a little curious as to what these are. Uh, I am assuming this is for making my own cables. Two by 100 megahertz oscilloscope probes. These were also pretty expensive. Here we go. I have never owned an oscilloscope. I have never even used an oscilloscope. I have never physically touched an oscilloscope. So this is all brand new to me. But I do know from watching a lot of videos that when you get probes, you can calibrate them, little screwdriver in there so that you get a cleaner signal. So once you put your probes on something and you start setting up your scope to get your initial square wave or sine wave or whatever, you will uh, calibrate using that. Uh, that way you get a little bit better signal and you're ready to go and away you go. And here's a spec sheet for these probes. So P6 600, I guess, series. So how much did all of this cost? It was about $300. Now logically, you might have a question, why did I go with this instead of opting for a, uh, a lower end U-scope? which is a one channel scope or a higher end Pico scope or you know any DSO in between there I guess. Uh, this is on the, the bottom bargain basement low end of the totem pole for oscilloscopes. You're not going to get very good signal clarity out of this. I, I know what it's going to do, okay? And then you have something like the U-scope, but the U-scope is one channel and I really wanted two channel, at minimum two channels to do cam and crank correlation. You need two channels for that. But I couldn't find a really, really cheap two channel scope. The U-scope is built on a DSO Nano. That's basically all it is. It's a DSO Nano scale, uh, shell. AES Wave has loaded in their custom firmware and God bless them, I'm not taking anything away from AES Wave. I know they work very hard on that firmware program for automotive purposes. And the same thing with Pico. Pico is an industry leader. I mean, they pioneer tons of stuff. And AES Wave as well. So I'm not taking anything away from AES Wave. It's just a little too expensive for my budget. Okay, this I am a bargain basement budget DIY channel. Uh, I cannot justify the cost of a $700 Pico scope. And that's not even including any of the accessories. That's just for... The, the unit itself, and the same for the U-Scope, the U-Scope unit itself, but it's about $100 for the, just for the unit. That's on par with this. However, all of the other accessories would have run me about $400. So it was $300 if I put it all together myself using Amazon, or $400 if I wanted to go with an uh, U-Scope from AES Wave, but it still would have only been one channel at the end of the day. So this was the cheapest multi-channel DSO USB oscilloscope that I could cobble together. So thank you to everyone that subscribed to my channel. Your support, your views, your comments on videos do help. This is the direct result from you simply watching my videos. That's it. That's all you got to do is watch. Uh, <laughs> and subscribe and, and comment. YouTube cuts me a check. So this is basically all thanks to you guys. So thank you. So the other stuff that I got. I went to the Home Depot. Your plugs. Actually, that's for me going to sleep so I don't have to listen to my brother. Tubing cutter. Copper to thread fitting. Female copper to thread fitting. A lot of, a lot of fittings here. And we have a lot of stuff. 
45 degree elbows. Oh, a lot of 45 degree elbows. Flux and solder kit. Uh, PVC cement. This is actually my brother's. I don't even know why this is in here. Ball valves. Copper. Copper line ball valves. Copper line ball valves. Copper line ball valves. Oh. Uh, yeah. Little adapter pipe. Another copper line ball valve. Another little fitting. 90 degrees. Pack of 90 degrees. More 45 degrees. It's a uh, fitting cleaning brush. And a whopper three quarter inch ball valve, along with other little clamps, fittings. So, all this stuff you paid for as well. And another thing that you can't see off camera because it's just ridiculous to show it's sitting on the floor one by two framing strips, 40 feet framing strips, and I also got 50 feet of half inch diameter copper pipe. To be fair, the tranny saver and the uh, valve cover kit, dress up kit from KL Motorsports was also paid for with the check from YouTube. So you actually bought some car parts for that. So cool. This is a Motor Guard M60 submicronic compressed air filter. Prince Valorum actually gave me this on the real cheap. He gave me a great deal. Thank you very much, Prince Valorum. You know how much I think of you. That's really, really awesome. It comes with two filters, so one goes in here and then one replacement. Now, I probably would not have ever purchased this because I think it's just a little too expensive. I mean, the filter that I actually have for, for my system is like this tiny little inline air filter. So this is like a massive, awesome filter compared to what I have currently anyway. The maximum inlet pressure is 125 PSI, which is fine because my air compressor will only go up to, I think, 150 and I will never have it above 90 PSI anyway. My air regulator will probably always be chucked on it at least you know 90 if not 80 so since this is half inch this is going to sit at the end of the copper pipe run that I'm going to be doing shortly this thing is not going to be sitting right next to the air compressor so here's the filter that it comes with and as you can see it looks like a roll of toilet paper and if you look really closely in there it does actually look like it, it's just a roll it's a roll of this filter stuff cheesecloth looking stuff I guess it's, it's a submicronic filter for sure because anything that's going to go from the outside to the inside of this filter is, uh, is going to get filtered out. Uh, yeah, this would actually be great for a post-apocalyptic kind of filter. Just stick this on a respirator and, and I think you'll be good to go. No, no zombie virus getting through something like that. Probably not going to get much air through there anyway, so I don't really know how this is going to flow that much air through something that compressed and that thin. But hey, I'm not an engineer. So that's really cool. Thanks, Prince Valorum. Can't wait to try this out. I'm not quite sure what this is. Is this a regulator on top of this thing? Holy crap, that's tight. Oh, this has got to be for opening it, right? And what is that? drain tube yeah I'm gonna have to look at some instructions or directions for this thing it even specifies in and out so you have to make sure it goes in a certain direction there doesn't look like there's any mounting bracket for this included so I'm gonna have to make one and that's no big deal I'll just make a saddle as Erico would say just make a big saddle around this saddle clamp clamp to the wall be good to go and there is one more purchase that you will not see, which is a green screen. Yes, I purchased a real cheap $10 thing. You can buy a green screen on Amazon for 10 bucks, just FYI. Actually, the one that I purchased includes a green screen, a white screen, and a black screen. Five foot by 10 foot, huge thing for 10 bucks. And I'm sure that's coming all the way from China because it's taken like a week and a half to get here at least already. Got some copper pipe projects coming up, oscilloscope videos coming up, lots, just, just lots and lots of stuff coming up. So again, thank you, YouTube subscribers, video watching peoples. All of this stuff is because of you. Cool.